Let's go and switch this back to filament then. I'll go back to the single viewport and I'll go bring my timeline up here and see what I want to render out from where to where. So this is where all the animation bits and pieces still find their still find their way in. I'd like to find something that starts literally in the middle of the cycle. Maybe even amend the cycle a little bit like the expressions. Maybe I'm going to go and move that back a little bit so that we can start at about 30 frames in. There's the eye blink. I'd rather avoid the eye blink for the first two seconds here. I blink. Where is the eye blink? Left claw expressions. I can see it all. I just can't see the eye blink. Where is it? Left, right, left claw expressions. I don't see the eye blink. Crap, eye blink. Here it is. That's the right back leg. Hang on a minute. There's something wrong with the naming conventions here. Left front, left middle. Oh! I have one track at the very top here. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't see that yesterday. <laughs> so this is actually the left middle leg. <laughs> I might just go and create, add one more, one more track to it. I can't move them, can I? No, I can't really move them. I'll put the eye blink one on there if I can. No, I can't. <laughs> okay, so delete eye blink and put eye blink on the bottom and just have them start blinking a little bit into that. So the first second I'm not gonna I'm not gonna use so the animation starts here but when it starts I don't want him to start having the expression and all that i'd rather like him to start like this that's that's kind of nice i like that and then just so that all this is basically uh, labeled wrongly then so i'll leave the any blocks in place maybe i'll just relabel them so that i that i remember what this what this all is so this here is going to be the left middle leg this is the left back leg something's happened what has happened Rico Comics, thank you so much for subscribing. I appreciate that. Very nice. So this is the left back leg. Then this one is already the right front leg. Oops. right mid leg and this is the right back leg then this one here i'll just call it the left front leg because that even though it's out of place it is then more correct and that's just the left front leg that goes here starts at the beginning this goes away and then the, the top track is just empty why all this work? Because now it's correct. The, the things were not quite correct before. Then the left claw snaps, I'll go and just move them slightly further back so that we find him on second one not quite doing anything just yet. There, 20 seconds is enough for that. So he just starts walking for the first second and then from say frame 31 onwards this is where our animation wants to start really and 20 seconds is going to be it's going to be ample i think i don't need anything longer than that but i also want uh, the whole movements i don't want them to be on a short loop i want them to just be a little bit different so that no uh, snapping movement and no eye movement keeps repeating i'd like for there to be not a visible um, repetition 
Hence the little gaps here. Alrighty, so I think that's that's got it. We've renamed things. This at the bottom here, this needs to be called iBlink. Quickly save everything. He looks like he's not quite framed up, but this is because of the shadow underneath it. If you remember when we had the shadow, the shadow kind of protrudes uh, out of here. I might even make him a little bit smaller just so that um, the shadow, I don't want the shadow to be cut off in the transparent render. That's important. I'm not quite sure if I'm going to, if I should render him like this because I'd like for him to walk through the picture like this. And I've animated the camera. Well, that was a big mistake, wasn't it? <laughs> I'll undo that in a minute. So I like the idea that he has, that we see more of him if we show him this way versus that way. I don't know, what do you think? This would be ideal if he walks through my overlay from left to right. That would be nice because it's literally, you know, front on. But this would, would show a little bit more of him. What do you think? It's almost like we need to try both versions out and then see them in the overlay and see if that's uh, what, what works best. I can't decide really. Let's try both. Let's first of all undo my, my terrible keyframe move there. That was on general transform probably rotation yeah there we go that was that's what i didn't want to do so i'll well actually i'll go and grab those keyframes and delete them and then i'll grab these keyframes and go move them to the front here and it wasn't just that it was also the road the translation so same thing here translation goes and uh, delete those take those move them over here so um, that would be the spot on in the middle framing and then I'll create a second camera that has the slightly slightly three quarters not quite three quarters Yeah, see this, I think I'm going to frame that up so that the shadow doesn't cut off at the at the right hand side here. So let me go and put him over here. So even though that's not quite in the middle, when I get to, when it comes to editing this in, uh, in the video editor, it's probably easier. I don't have to worry about the shadow being cut off here. Because when you do, it's just that, that that line that we might see there. Yeah, so this is how I'd like to render him. Well, that should be nice. Should be good. This is camera, so I'll call this one camera frontal. And then let's see if we can make another camera They'll be more like this. And we'll see which version looks better in the end. So this is going to be the... I'll call it the three-quarter shot. is isn't really... Ah. Camera three-quarter. Okay, so then for the actual render, if we switch that back to filament, I think we'll start at one second in. And then we go to 
exactly 21 so yeah to 21 seconds so from one to second 21. let's see if we can tell our render settings where and how that works so that is under the general here i'll leave it in 720 for now it's just going to be a very tiny thing that'll whiz around my overlay so it doesn't have to be that big and i'll give it a location down here Crab walk, so he gets a new folder, and in it we're gonna have another folder, crab walk v1. Well, in fact, let's leave it with the let's leave it in line with the file name that I've given it. So that's v5. And then we select that folder. We need to go direct to file. And also, instead of still image, we need to see this as a, an image series. That's very important. We don't want to render a movie because in case something goes wrong, then I wouldn't be able to replace something in the middle. So I need to have an image series here. Hey, Mr. Brian, good to see you. I'll have a coffee now that you're here. I'm just about to render out my little guy and set up the ins and outs for for the for the program so that it can just go and you know render in the background it doesn't, doesn't take too long even though there's quite a few amount of frames i'm rendering so we'll see what happens so we'll start at frame 31 we'll render at 30 frames a second and the end is frame 21 so let me go and bring my my calculator out again so frame 21 what is that in frames 21 times 30 frames that is 630 that's when we want to stop rendering i'll give it one extra frame so 631 that's the 600 frames that's quite nice oh serious path so sorry that needs to be the path that i thought i had already set <laughs> under videos and animations crab walk crab walk v5 and then i need to give it a title as well I'll call it crab v5 dash and then that should render this with a number at the end and then actually there's also crab three quarter v5 so then the next one is going to be um, the crab straight or crab frontal v5 oh let's do that save and how long did we say an image takes at this resolution? Not all that long. For an animatic, I suppose we can we can take it down a notch. But since we have that other instance of Das Studio that's still rendering, it's not even, <laughs> hasn't even done it. So we can just we're probably going to abandon this project. <laughs> I'm going to have to tell Squeaky Buddha he's not happy about this. <laughs> I might actually try this again. And just make sure the subdivision surface modifier is switched off. This did not work well. Let's see when it when it stops. This one here. So one one final save. Let's see how it renders. How long it takes. So it's so it's literally two seconds, two three seconds per frame. We can do that. that. That is good. It'll also test my new power supply. Brian, my new power supply has arrived today, which is nice. It's now an 1150 watt, uh, technically kind of a 1200 watt power supply. And those of you who are interested in electronic engineering will appreciate this little puzzle. Maybe you can help me out and give me the solution to that puzzle. So my workstation has a choice of two power supplies. It's a HP Z800 workstation. Same goes for the Z840 workstation. That there are two power supplies. One is called the 850 watt power supply, and that will deliver 850 watts no matter if you use it here in the US or over in Europe, where the voltage is different. But the higher power supply will deliver 1250 watts if used in Europe, but only 1125 watts when used with 100 volts in America. It will deliver 1125 when used with 110 volts or 120 volts, but it will yield a higher wattage when you put more voltage in there, namely 240 volts. Why is that? 
and why is it that only the the higher power supply has this issue why isn't it applicable on lower voltage uh, on or lower wattage power supplies answers on a postcard